David, this is a key week for a lot of different reasons, but the consumer is in focus. What exactly can we expect in your mind? Hey, Tom, thanks for having me on this morning. So it, I think it's pretty clear that the pace of consumer spending has moderated lately. The past few months have been a bit slower. We're, what we're looking for here as we get through earnings season, we'll hear from Home Depot tomorrow, Walmart later in the week. It seems as though investors are baking in a pretty weak Q2 period, at least for home improvement. You know, you've had some of this broad-based uh, impact on the lower-end consumer starting to trickle across and maybe even migrating up towards the middle-income type earners and seeing that spending slow down a bit. But, but at least from my perspective, a lot of investors that we speak to seem as though these, these numbers have been sort of couched for a weaker Q2 period. Maybe we get some full-year guide downs from these companies, and that'll set a lower bar for the back half of the year. So as long as we get this sort of stabilization in spending and then couple that with a lower back half guide, I think that's basically what's expected in the marketplace right now. Within your coverage universe, the, the keys for you, the, the big names you cover that we're going to be focused on this week will be Lowe's and Home Depot. You've got a, a lot of other names that you look at. I mean, Chewy, AutoZone, a lot of discretionary type names. But when it comes to Lowe's and Home Depot, how much are they indicative of the U.S. consumer right now? Or, and or, how much are they indicative of a housing and interest rate market that's in transition? Yes, yeah, great, great question. So highly indicative of the U.S. consumer. You've got puts and takes, though, right? Because these guys are really in the crosshairs of a weaker housing market. You've had some very choppy weather throughout the Q2 period, so that'll weigh on demand. But they do have some more resilient categories ac across the store. We're, we're looking for more of a stabilization in spending from Home Depot, lows in the following week. That'll give us a better picture of what's to come from the consumer. But the, these bigger ticket items and ones that are you know, lend themselves to some type of financing. You're talking about a, a large home renovation or remodel, kitchen remodel. Those are what's been under serious pressure of late. If those metrics start to stabilize and potentially improve slightly as we get through some of these tougher comparisons, I think that'll be a very good sign for both of these and a broader sign that consumer spending is back on a better pace. How key will interest rates be to the Lowe's and Home Depot story? We, we know that when interest rates move lower, there is perhaps more propensity for customers to spend on bigger ticket items. Those bigger ticket items, by the way, have been flagged as an area of weakness for quarters now. Yeah, that's right. So lower rates are a key proponent of this story. It'll take some time, right? If the rates come down, you'll see existing home sales pick up. Maybe that's a delay of three, six, nine months. So we, investors are trying to get ahead of this. I, I think Lowe's is actually better exposed. They've, they've got more of these light DIY type projects that should pick up when people do move. You're talking about painting, you know, buying some appliances, buying things like barbecues, outdoor patio type items. So I, I, I think when you do see the turn, Lowe's will benefit quicker, but Home Depot is right, right there as well. And it, both of those names should work as rates begin to move lower. And then just before we let you go, David, how key is this setup in the coming, say, weeks and maybe month or two ahead of that key back to school and then eventually holiday shopping season? Do things look good heading into the fourth quarter? Yeah, I think the consumer is still in decent shape. Right? We've got a lot of questions lately of what does all the election noise mean? Uh, there's going to be a shortened holiday season, so people trying to position ahead of that. A few of the names we like that are in the more defensive space are O'Reilly Auto Parts, AutoZone, and on a SMID cap level is Valvoline. So these companies have more you know, maintenance-like demands. They, they're not as exposed on the discretionary side. So, so I think investors are trying to position ahead of any upcoming noise here. And then that shortened holiday, it, it could have a material impact on the consumer.